there. Right, and while that's drying, let's work over this side. Again, I'll use a template across the top of the wall and just stipple in a few trees like that, look. And then across the top of the wall here, in front of the building, we've got a group of trees down here. A bit of burnt sienna now I've added to the mix and across that stone wall there. And then behind here, a bit of cobalt blue, rinse the brush right on the tissue. You'll notice I've always got tissue in my hand because I use that to control the wetness of paint. Some bushes in the background there. And then there's a large bush or tree across the top here. Right, we'll turn these into trees now. We'll rinse the brush. Now, how do we get the snow on the trees? This is where I use a little bit of white acrylic paint. You can use gouache, but gouache will soak in 50%. And I don't want that here. I want the paint, the white of the snow, to stay on the top. So let's put some snow on these trees. Just hold the brush very lightly, very gently. It's just slipping through my fingers. And we'll just stipple. It's as easy as that. I could have done this as a very simple wash, but those that know me expect a bit of detail in my work. See how easy it is? You just slip away. And when I get further down here, I want it a little bit wider. The underpainting must be dry, of course, before you do this. A little bit more. The secret of painting is three minutes thinking and one minute painting. And we'll just put hints of snow on these background trees here. It's making me feel cold already. Just a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Right, let's put the building in now. So I'm going to put the red roof in now. I'm going to put some pantiles on to add a bit of colour to this painting. So the way I do that, I add 20% roughly of alizarin crimson and 80% burnt sienna. And that's the colour that I'm going to want. So using the template, I'm going to just go across here, look, with a three-quarter brush and I'm just going to go like that, look. I want a little bit darker colour in, so I'll add a bit of bit paint's grey to the mix. And we'll just darken that edge, put a few darker bits in like that. Just to give it variation. And I'll take the template off. And there's our red roof. We'll just put in the coping stones at the top. Coping tiles. And there we are. Now let's put the door frame in. Again, we can use this brush, Payne's Grey, with a bit of burnt sienna, and we'll, there's a door frame here. And here's a big door we've got across here. Actually, I'll come to a smaller brush. I'll use my size 8 rigger, just paint that in like that. A little bit of wood across the top. I'll use a bit of burnt sienna here because there's a door on this side. What I sometimes use when I'm painting, you know, I take a small pair of binoculars so I can see exactly what it is. Darken that there like that. There's again this little wood lintel across the top. I'll put a few dark bits on the door. And straighten the wall. Now the side of the building is in shadow, so I use some burnt sienna and some Payne's grey. Like that. And there's some bushes going across the front, and there's a little opening in the building here, I see. Little lintel again at the top and the bottom. There's a little red roof to go on this building here. Again, we'll use a template. Want a little bit of shadow, a bit of Payne's grey now. A little bit of shadow underneath the building like that. See how the three-quarter brush can be used quite effectively? Right, it's time for the stone wall. And I'm going to use a technical term now, so don't get worried. I'm going to splash it on all over. I'm applying a raw sienna to start with.
Then I'm going to put some burnt sienna in, leaving the raw sienna showing through, and then some Payne's grain burnt sienna. Leaving some of each of the other colours showing through. And then we're going to use the wonder knife. And we're going to put in the pan tires on the top like that. I'm just using the point of the knife. Then I'm going to indicate that it's a stone wall by just putting some stonework in. You won't see a lot of them, this is going to be in shadow under the trees, but nevertheless I want to indicate there's some stonework there. Same on this side, let's do this wall. Use the template again. Splash some raw sienna on there, look. Again I'm putting in a bit of Payne's grey in there, look, just to darken that wall. And let's just put in a few little coping stones on the top, and then an indication that is a stone wall. Now the paint's a bit wet at the moment, it should be about a third dry before you do this. But it's dried a little bit now, so let's just put some of those stones back in. That's it there like that. Just want to indicate a few. Now we're going to do this stone wall down here now. We're building up the painting step by step. Three quarter flat now, it's a little bit longer. You'll notice I've taken the stone wall farther along. It would have normally come about here. But I want it further along to make a more pleasing composition. So let's just... And this wall's quite dark in the foreground, so I'm going to put a bit of burnt sea and a bit of cobalt blue on. A bit of pins grey, let's have some, that's what I want. Let's pick out the bottom here a bit. We shall put in the coping stones using the tip of the knife. So I'm just going along there look and putting an indication of some stones. Right, let's put in some of the detail now. I'm going to use my size 8 rigger, but it's a large rigger, so I'm going to put in here, look, I'm going to just put some darker colour along the top of the wall here. Give some depth to these bushes or trees that's behind there. Some depth in the bottom of there. Now there's some bushes and things in here, so let's put these in. We'll just stipple these in. They're in shadow. We'll just put these in very, very simply. I've used a bit of paint square and a bit of uh, green. There's a range of bushes along here. They're going to be in shadow. 